Hi everyone, EF Course 7 just released with some very interesting new features that I want to show you in today's video. We're going to see how we can use the new execute update and execute delete methods to perform bulk updates on our database. Let's jump straight into the code and see how we can use the new features. I'm going to use the awesome company example to show you how we can use the new EF Core features. Our domain is very simple. We have a company which has its employees. And here I have a minimal API endpoint with the route of increased salaries. And what this endpoint does is it accepts a company ID and it injects a database context. And then it fetches the company from the database. And for every employee, it increases the salary by 10%. The problem here is that we have to loop through all of the employees inside of the company. And this can be a problem if you have a lot of employees inside of a single company. For example, we could have a company with 100,000, maybe a million employees. This endpoint is going to get slower and slower as the number of employees inside of the company increases. In one of my previous videos, I showed you how you can get around this by using SQL updates. I gave you two options. One was using NAD framework and performing the SQL update. And the second option was using Dapper. You can go ahead and watch that video from the link that's going to pop up here. But today, we're going to be using the new feature that is available in NAD Framework Core 7, which is called Execute Update. I'm going to copy over this endpoint and create a new one. And inside of this new endpoint, we're going to be using this new NAD Framework feature that I'm talking about. Let's name the endpoint Increase Salaries V2. And what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of this entire for each loop that was increasing the salaries by 10% for our employees. Also, I'm not going to be including the employees when I'm fetching the company from the database because it's no longer necessary. And let me show you how we can use the new execute update method. We have to use the database context to write a query that is going to match all of the records that we want to update in the database. So in our example, I'm going to get the DB context and get the employees DB set. Now I'm going to write an expression that is going to select all of the employees that we want to update. And in this case, these are going to be the employees that are employed in the company that we just fetched from the database. So I'm going to write an expression here that the company ID of the employee is equal to the ID of the company that we just fetched from the database. And now that we have a query that matches all of the employees inside of the company, we can call the new method that is available in EF Course 7, which is execute update. With the execute update function, we can define an expression to increase the salaries of all of the employees in our company by 10%. To achieve that, we're going to write an expression here and call the set property method on it. We have to provide two functions here. The first one is going to select the property on the employee entity that we want to update. And the second function is going to provide the value that we want to set for that property on the employee entity. So in our case, we want to select the salary property on the employee. And we want to provide a value that is equal to the salary of the employee increased by 10%. So this is how we would use the new execute update feature to increase the salaries of all the employees in the company by 10%. This method has an async overload, which I'm going to use here. So I have to await this call. The interesting thing to highlight here is we're not loading the employee entities into memory, which means they won't be tracked inside of your change tracker. So if you have any interceptors, or you are overriding the save changes method on the DB context to perform some additional logic that is not going to be triggered. So don't be surprised if this is not behaving as you would expect it to. This also means that there is no point in calling the save changes async method right here because the execute update method is going to perform the update directly in the database. So we can safely get rid of this call to save changes async. I'm going to set a breakpoint at the start of our minimal API endpoint, and we're going to see how the execute update method actually works. I'm going to call our new API endpoint from Postman, and this is going to trigger our breakpoint that I just set. And as you can see, we've entered our increased salaries v2 endpoint. And the first thing we do is we fetch the company 
with the ID of 1 that we have over here. And because the company is not null, we get to our call to execute update async. This call is going to go to the database and update all of the employees that belong to this company and increase their salaries by 10%. So if I execute this statement, let's check out the SQL that LED Framework generated and sent to the database. So if you take a look here, you can see the SQL query that any framework generated and sent to the database with our new execute update method. You can see that we have a typical update query that you would normally write when you want to update a range of records in the database based on some condition. We have a set statement here that sets the value of the salary to whatever was the previous value of the salary times 1.1, which is a 10% increase. And here we have a WHERE statement that filters the employees by the company ID column to match the company ID that we specify as a parameter. As you can imagine, this is going to perform much faster than the previous example where we would loop through the entire employees collection to perform the updates. To show you the difference between the first example and the new one using the execute update method, I'm going to go over to Postman and we're going to call our API endpoints a couple of times and see what the response time is. The first request right now is going to be a little bit slow because I just started the API and we're going to run into a cold start. As you can see, it took almost two seconds, but if I keep sending the request a few times, it's going to stabilize and we can say that it performs around 140 milliseconds. So this is the example that loops through the entire employees collection and performs the update one by one. And then it persists all of those changes in the database with the call to save changes. Let's take a look at our new version 2 endpoint that uses the new execute update method that is available in EF Core 7. If I call this API endpoint, you're going to see that it's much faster than the previous one. If you take a look, it completes in around 12, 10 milliseconds, something like that, which is more than 10 times faster than what we previously had. So if I have a similar situation in my application where I want to update a range of entities to some fixed value, this is probably the approach that I'm going to be taking from now on. Previously, I had to write the SQL statement myself and execute it either with NAD Framework or with an external library like Dapper. I want to show you one more new feature that we have in EF Core 7. For that, I'm going to create another API endpoint. And this one is not going to be a put endpoint. I'm going to make it a delete endpoint. I'm going to change the route to delete employees. And in this endpoint, I want to delete the employees inside of the company that have a salary that is greater than some salary that I provide as an argument here. So besides the company ID, I'm going to be adding a new argument that is going to be the salary threshold. So let me create that one real quick. So how are we going to delete all of the employees? Previously, if you wanted to do this with NAD Framework, you would have to load all of the employees from the database that satisfy the condition that we set here and then delete the employees one by one and call save changes. Now you can use the new method that is available in EF Course 7, which is the execute delete method. And I'm going to show you how we can use it. We have to update our where statement here to apply the condition based on the salary threshold. So I'm going to say if the salary is greater than the salary threshold that we provide through our endpoint, then we don't want to update these employees, but we want to delete them. And this method doesn't have any arguments, so I'm going to get rid of this. And this is how we can execute a bulk delete using NAD Framework 7. And let's see how this works in action. I'm going to place a breakpoint here and we're going to hit this from Postman. I prepared the delete request in Postman, which is going to call our new delete employees endpoint. And I'm specifying the company ID of one, which is the company that we have in the database, and the salary threshold of 10,000. I'm going to send this delete request to our API, and then we're going to see what's going on. We hit our minimal API endpoint, and we first fetch our company from the database. And because the company is not null, we get to our execute delete call, which is going to delete all of the employees that belong to this company and have a salary that is greater than the salary threshold that we specified here, which is 10,000. If I execute this call, it's going to directly go to the database 
and apply an SQL delete statement and get rid of all of the records that satisfy the condition that we just specified. Let's take a look at the console output to see what is the SQL that any framework generates and sent to the database. As you can see, we have a delete statement here that is going to delete all of the employees where the company ID column matches the company ID parameter that we sent and the salary is greater than the salary threshold parameter that we also sent to the database. So in this case, NAD Framework is going to generate a range delete statement and remove all of the matching entities from the database. Again, it's important to highlight that there is no change tracking going on in this situation. NAD Framework is not going to load the entities from the database and then delete them one by one. It's going to go directly to the database and delete all of the entities. If you made it this far into the video, I have a small favor to ask of you. I write a weekly newsletter about .NET that I send out every Saturday. It's short and sweet on purpose with just one actionable topic that you can apply in your own applications and it's less than a five minute read. In the first comment below, you're going to find the link to my website where you can subscribe to the newsletter. Thank you for watching this video about the new EF Core 7 features and until next time, stay awesome.